Hello. Uh, once we assumed that reason and rationality would gradually uncover the truth, but quantum mechanics to set theory, positivism to deconstruction, philosophical realism to philosophical relativism. It seems that paradox lies at the heart of our most revered theories and at the cornerstones of our thought. Are these paradoxes evidence that our theories are wrong? And is it essential that they are overcome? Joining us to discuss are Hilary Lawson, Hilary is a postmodern philosopher and critic of philosophical realism. He is the author of Reflexivity, the Postmodern Predicament and Closure. Sophie Allen is a lecturer in philosophy at Keele University. Her research focuses on metaphysics and the philosophy of science. And Slava Zizek, uh, joining us by the miraculous paradox of quantum physics, both in his kitchen in Ljubljana and in North London right now. He's a Slovenian-born political philosopher and the international director of the Birkbeck Institute of Humanities. So uh, let's get things started. Hilary, I'm going to start with you. Are paradoxes evidence that our theories are wrong, and is it essential that they are overcome? There's something at least amiss with the way that we, uh, our theories operate. And I think it's essential that we do something about it. Uh, first of all, let's just be clear what we mean by paradox. It's a contradiction which applies to the claim itself in such a way that you cannot think the claim. So the classic example of this is the Cretan liar paradox, which in its contemporary form is probably most easily expressed as there is no truth. Now, in the claim there is no truth, it seems apparently straightforward. But it's not straightforward if you apply it to itself. Because if there is no truth, does it mean there is no truth, that there is no truth? Um, or, or in order to understand the sentence, do you in fact have to imagine it to say there is a truth, that there is no truth? In which case, you cannot think that idea. If you look up paradox in Wikipedia, it'll tell you this is a bit of a logical, technical, logical problem. And it's, it's uh, possibly been solved by Russell's theory of types and Tarski's hierarchy of languages. I don't buy either of those things. I don't think it's a little logical problem. It's found at the heart, I would argue, of all of the major philosophical systems of at least the 20th century and for uh, a good deal prior to that. And it comes in lots of different forms. They all have this self-referential problem right at the heart of the puzzle. So what's going on? Why do we find this uh, uh, at the center of our theories? And the sort of answer that I would give is something along these lines. That we imagine, or we, Western thought is in general imagine that we are describing a world of things out there um, and it's more or less accurate. A better way of understanding that would be to think that the world is other. It's not like language at all. Language divides things into things and it divides them into characteristics. But that's no reason to think that the world is divided into things and characteristics. It's like a metaphor for the world. But they don't enable us ever to describe the other that's out there. There's always an infinite gap between our ideas and the world. And it is in thinking that we might be able to close that gap and actually say how it is that we get into these uh, paradoxes. This account that I've given you, this story of closure, uh, you might say, well, aren't you claiming that that's true? The account that I've given is an attempt to describe why it's possible to describe the world, uh, why it's possible to say things and intervene in the world without it having to be true. It's very tantalising. Thank you, Hilary. <laughs> Sophie Allen, our paradox is evidence that our theories are wrong, and is it essential that they are overcome? OK, um, I'm sympathetic to quite a lot of what Hillary said there, but I'm going to disagree on some things. But what I'm going to do philosophically here is actually give you two views, two opposing views. And one side says that, OK, our theory, if you think your theories are about the world, if you think your theories are actually true, if you're a realist, then it's going to be a serious problem if um, paradoxes arise in your theory, because that is actually telling you that th paradoxes arise in the world that somehow, if your theory is correct, if your theory is the right one, that implies that actually the world is somehow contradictory. 
Now, that is a very difficult thing to understand. There are a couple of philosophers who accept that, who would actually quite persuasively argue that we can accept the existence of, con that some contradictions are true, or that some paradoxes could actually be manifested. Now, I'm not going to be one of those philosophers, but I'm just kind of throwing it out there. So, on the one hand, if you're a realist about theories and you think that our theories are actually about the world, the, the appearance of paradoxes are, is really problematic. On the other hand, if you take the view, it's perhaps similar to what um, Hillary's described, our theories are trying to model the world, they're trying to explain the world, they may not actually pick out what's actually in it. They may say things that we can, they may predict and explain what's going to happen, but they won't actually tell us what the world contains. In that case, a paradox is not quite as big a disaster when it appears in your theory. When you get a paradox appearing, you can actually look at things and say, OK, we're making, we're making a definitional mistake, we're making a conceptual mistake. Now, I think it's not possible to eliminate paradoxes entirely, but they are going to, they're going to appear, but I'm not sure it's inevitable that they'll appear. OK, wonderful. And Slavo Žižek, uh, are paradoxes evidence that our theories are wrong and is it essential that they are overcome? Paradox, getting entangled in some precisely defined, not any inconsistencies, is maybe the only reliable proof that we are touching the real. I think that Hegel, in his Phenomenology of Spirit, basically repeats the same procedure again and again. He takes a certain, let's call it existential position, and he tries to demonstrate how, if you bring this position, if you think it or practice it to the end, it will, it will refute itself. It gets inconsistent. And I apologize in advance for the vulgarity of this example. <laughs> it's a horrible movie that I don't even like it. Four <laughs> weddings and a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> and Hugh Grant declares love to Andy McDowell. He did, does this in his affected way, you know, stumbling, self-interrupting, uh, interrupting himself all the time and so on. And it's clear what's the idea. It's that precisely through this inability to declare his love in a consistent, clear statement, that this very fact somehow demonstrates that his love is authentic. A subject always, in a way, fails to fully express himself or herself successfully. And it's this very failure, uh, uh, inability to do it, which makes you a subject. I don't think we should be afraid of paradoxes, but we should definitely not confuse, let's call, call them naively somehow, serious paradoxes with this cheap either deconstructionist jargon or whatever where anything say when you don't know what to say clearly you escape into cheap metaphorics and so on and so on. So again as a Hegelian I think that our very distance towards reality, I'm not there, I cannot grasp the world, is a feature of the world itself. The world is in itself inconsistent and so on. Thank you. <laughs> Now, this is a paradox. How people could be so stupid to applaud to this miserable improvisation? <laughs> oh my God, I cannot get out of it, sorry. <laughs> and they're cheering even more. I want us to develop our arguments a little bit. So we, we may be able to work around paradoxes and they may even drive our progress or our sense of human subjectivity, but why are they so common to begin with? Why is paradox found at the heart of so many of our core theories?